Hello and welcome to Extra Connections. I'm James Lottini here on JLJ Media. And I have a legend, I said on another show I was talking about. She is a performer, Broadway, off-Broadway, around the world stages. She's been on shows like Ed Sullivan, which I'm going to ask her about that, Saturday Night Live, and just, I mean, countless TV shows. Uh, she was on The Nanny, which is one of my favorite shows, of course. Um, but she has a gorgeous new duet single, I mean, not duet, a duo single, the Look of Love and The Island, which I love your interpretation of it. Um, and a new video, we're gonna talk about that and get to know her. I'm just honored to have her. And she has a sister named Barbara, that's something different. But we're gonna get to know Miss Roslyn Kind. Hi, Miss Roslyn. Hi, James, how are you? It's fine, I'm fine. It's very, I'm honored, I'm just honored to have you on my show. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, it's yes. such a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I was telling her before the show, like she has a glow, she's excited. I mean, she, so, I mean, you must be happy these days with how things are going. I'm happy with my, my new recording that's out yeah. and the fact that it was my first uh, time I produced something yeah. that was live, almost, it's a mini movie. It's like a six minute mini movie short. Yes. And um, I, I loved the experience. It was joyous. I loved everybody that worked on it from my heart. They came from their hearts and with the light. And that's the only way to work. I'm here to tell you that's the only way to work. Well, Ms. Ross, and I, I will tell you as part of um, certain communities, I liked how diverse your uh, cast was. And yeah. What was that a conscious decision? Yeah, Tracy Toms, we love her. Yes, her her. we love her. What's about that in a second? You also had a gay couple too, and you had other folks in the background. Like the backgrounds were. Right. I wanted to make a statement that love is love is love, and everything begins and ends with love, and everybody has the right to love whoever they want to love. It's yeah. not for anybody else's input. You right. know, live and let live. What's good for you is not good for the next one, and vice versa. Correct. I just, I just, I just love that you were like it. Just, it was just, it was just normalized in the video. It was like just part of the, it was part of the song, part of the video, everything. Exactly. It was great. So, and you look gorgeous in the video. First off, there, there's a <laughs> shot of you when he, when your man comes to take you out from <laughs> the, the microphone, and you kind of the camera, you're like glowing, and he takes you off. I was like, you go, girl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. That lead actor. Um, wait, so how'd you get Tracy Toms in your, I mean, how do you guys even know? She's a friend. She's a friend. I met Tracy because she was uh, really good friends with my friend Sargon Yosef. And through Sargon, I met Tracy. And I said to, I said to, I said to Segi, I said, do you think Tracy would do me a favor and be at one of my tables in the cafe scene? And she, in a, in a second, she's such a oh. doll. Yes. Such a doll. I love. Who would say no to you? Come on. I'm like, yes, yeah, sure. Oh, you'd be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, let's let's okay, let's talk that for a second. In your career, we've all had rejection. I've been in business 20 years, or you've been on this while. We can business. <laughs> but 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 were some of the no's very creative no's? Were they just like, yeah, you know, like, kind of like, like how would how did how did you handle some of those? What no's? do you mean by a creative no? Like, like sometimes it may say, well. Your so and so sister, never mind. Just like no off the bat, or they're like, "Well, we're just not sure." I mean, like, I just wonder if there's if some of the no's were just kind of were they funny? Were some of them funny? Were some of them just like some they've been just funny? Like, they've been funny. They've been insulting. They've been yeah. <laughs> all over the gamut. I'm you sure. know, years ago before I started garnering my own fan, uh, following and stuff, people there were people who were fans of my sisters that, how dare she step into the? How dare she is? It's like, I'm not in competition. I'm a whole other person doing a whole other thing. And what I have in common is our genes, our G-E-N-E-S. Yes. You know, and I can't deny those. Yeah. But I love to sing and I love to touch people's hearts. Yeah. And, you know, everybody has a right to do, hopefully, what they love doing. Yeah. For whatever reason, they love doing it, you know. So, I mean, but that a lot of that has stopped. A yeah. lot of that has stopped. But yeah, there were people in the beginning, oh, I don't need a copy. I don't, who's copying who? And that's people in the business. I'm right. Thinking, me. Oh. You know, have you ever had a sister or brother that you sound alike? Not because you're doing, you know, it's, you're not an imitation. It's the genes. I'm glad you, no, I'm glad you said it because we, you know, we, I, I have siblings where we, we look related, we sound, but like it, we're two different people. It's just, it just, you grew up together. That's kind of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand. I remember years ago, I had a friend who 
uh, because she was a fan of my sisters and her mother was, I won't say named, famous as well. And, uh, but she had a thing for my sister. And it's like, I, when I talk about my sister, I don't say names, I just, oh, my sister. And she used to hate when I said that because a mutual friend of, my, of both of ours told me that she would get so upset when I would say that my that Bob was my sister. I didn't say Bob. I, my, just call her my sister. Right. You wouldn't say. You wouldn't say that. <laughs> no, say, I wouldn't. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my sis, my my sibling, my right. my big sister that I look yeah. up to. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really funny how people react. And I, I remember in high school, I had people when I went to Erasmus. There were people who wanted to know me because of, and people who well, suddenly decided they didn't want to know me because. Of. Mm, that's interesting, right? Those are a whole lot of oh my gosh, and yeah. I don't even know that they have a reason why. Right, right, yeah. and, that's, and that happens in non-famous families too, where the one sibling at school maybe gets a little more accolades. So they they, they right. take the other sibling and compare them to them. Right, that's not yeah. good either. That's not good no, either. No, and that's good. Oh wait, a minute. I want to ask you a question. Are you? I read stuff and don't know the truth. Are you related to Richard Kind, the actor? No. Why is everybody asking me that? That's why. Okay, because I'll tell you why, Rosalind. Because I said I don't trust. I don't trust anything. But on, on Wikipedia, oh, it, somebody it, put that in. And that's your cousin. I've seen other things that I've had to take out that they put in there. I said, who yes. gives them the right to change what I put I in? I know. And I said, as I said, I'm just going to ask because I don't think they're related. But I'm just going to ask just to just clear the air on that. I'm like, I've never even know. met Richard Kahn. I mean, and if he is related, nobody ever told me. <laughs> He's your cousin. I'm telling here to tell you. Here's Richard Kind. Or Skinner, Skinner, Skinner. You know, maybe there's a possibility somewhere down the line, but I don't know. Not yeah. that I'm aware of. I have no yeah. idea. I just want to just put two names together and they just they did that. Right. And who thought when I went in the business, how many people named Kind? Just like right. <laughs> you know, it's like really? And to have the same exact initials? RK. <laughs> <laughs> But your last name actually, it sounds like it, you should be in show business, kind. Like it's a great last name. It's like it's a great last name. <laughs> it's a great know. name for a candy bar, too. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, she's telling jokes on my show. I can't believe it. I love it. I, love it. I can't believe it. I love it. Um, a healthy one. <laughs> I, 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 healthy, I, I don't actually have a healthy one, right? I, I, I healthy one. But going, so, going, so, okay, I just want to get that. So, going back to um, your producing of this video and stuff, what made you decide to produce? We'll say a mini movie. It's a mini, it is like six, seven minutes long. What made you decide because, to do it now to produce it? Because the song was six minutes long. The song was six point two, yeah. and I wasn't uh, even though my director Monique Impagliazzo said to me, "Rosie, do you think we could cut it? Like take out some?" I said, "Absolutely not," because in the storyline, the music interlude helps create the going back in time and coming back in time. I think it would hinder it. I, you know, just to make it a regular music uh, music video. No, it's got to adhere to the quality of the song and where the song is going, and it enhances the story. I never thought we'd end up with a six point five five two or whatever it is video by the time you're finished with the credits and everything. Yeah. But the story has to be true to itself. Yeah. You know, um, I wouldn't repeat on it. What did you learn producing? What'd you learn? I didn't. I'm doing, I just have an instinct. I kind of have an instinct for myself, you know? Um, and, you know, I, I, I do, I'm proving to myself every day that I have more insight than I think I have. <laughs> you don't know until you test. I produced my wedding when I got married. Yeah. I have a whole production. This is going to happen here. And this is going to happen here and blah, blah, and blah, blah. And then we'll get met. <laughs> And I had such fun. <laughs> yes, yes. I wish my marriage worked out, but it was like, <laughs> but the wedding was, oh my God. <laughs> hey, it was a beautiful day. You produced it very day, well. Production. We had some fun. <laughs> my cake fell, but what the heck, that was a <laughs> Your cake fell during the wedding? I, the cake fell because I, I had done it at a French bakery, did my catering, and they I said I wanted it to be like an American cake. We have cake and cream and cake and cream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And still did it like a French cake. It was cream and cake, cream and Oh, cake. my God. And they had to come down a mountain into a the valley, yeah. and the bumps and the bumps and the lumps, when they got there, they, they couldn't stack the cake because it was... they. Had, and my my intended, soon to be my husband, saw it and didn't want to tell me about it because he said, oh my gosh, she's going to freak. So they were busy patching it up 
but they patched it up, but we could never stack. Oh, got it. <laughs> that should have been then, but it's like they couldn't, they, they couldn't put it together, right? So you're going to see it anyway. You're going you're gonna, <laughs> to freak out after you're married. Oh, my God. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that story. I heard the story because you got married on your son Barbara's on Barbara's ranch. I mean, on her place. Right. Yeah, and she wasn't there because she had to. She wasn't had to there because I wanted her for my maid of honor, and yeah. she was in, doing yentl in Europe, and we were praying that she would get finished, get finished, and come back. And then uh, it was like never ending. And I had, I had dates between my my niece graduating from college and this and that. Every date kept changing. So my sister said, "Just go ahead." You know, I really, I really wanted her to be part of it, but. We had your brother. Your brother walked down the aisle. My brother walked me down the aisle. Yes, and uh, and my my husband's uh, niece was in in the wedding party, and I had a good friend in the wedding party, and, and my niece Ricky Erica was yeah. in it. So it was yeah. it was lovely. It was a lovely Sunday afternoon. It was a French uh, ambiance with oh. it. my colors were ivory and peach because I was older already, so I'm not going to have pure white. Yeah. You know, but it was like very lovely. It had great musicians and yeah. great food and low celebration. The, thing, the wedding, the marriage too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you had a great beginning though. I'll give you that. Oh, yeah, great beginning. Oh, yeah, they... and I had such fun planning it. I don't know why brides leave it to their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so I want to find out why these two songs. Um, and why a medley. I love both songs. Look at Love's my favorite songs of all time. I love this my just favorite songs. And I like your phrasing on it. Your, your interpretation is slightly different than I've heard other people do. I was like, yeah, I like the way she's singing it. And um, but I like the two songs together and they're so beautifully woven together. Why these two songs? Well, I did I did the look of love in the beginning of my career. Even when I was 18, it was my first time on the road. That was one of the songs in my repertoire. And the, uh, the critics would say, what does she know about love? She's so young. She, what does she know? <laughs> and I said, well, first of all, I'm a romantic and I love romantic movies and I watch movies. I know what love is. Yeah. I love my friends. I love my family. Yeah. Albeit that there is a different type of love. I knew what love is. Yeah. And um, so that was my, but I loved always doing it. And then the island I put into one of my shows uh, when I was playing the back lot in Los Angeles in the 80s. Okay. And I remember introducing it by, by I would say, pardon me while I get laid. And I put a, you know, a Hawaiian lay over my neck. And I was like, oh, Norman, Norman, it's the loons, it's the loons. <laughs> it was like, and then I went into make believe we're blinded. You know, so it was like oh. setting the stage for being like on, on an island. Yeah. So, I so love um, I and love I it. loved it, and I I did them separately for years in different shows, different sets. Yeah, and I now came a time where I was looking to put after we passed the two thousand year, to do another road uh, road tour, and I said, I wonder what these two sound. I love them; they're my favorite songs from the seventies. I mean, how can you not love these songs? Yeah, they're so good, especially if you're a romantic. Yeah, I want and um, and I said, well, I wonder what they would sound like together as a story. It is. I love singing story songs. One of my favorites is Meadowlark from The Baker's Wife. Oh, yes. You know. I mean, they're tour de force. Yeah. Singing is acting. It is. I was, I was going to say that. I was going to say that. It is acting, isn't it? You know, it is if you do live your lyrics. Some people don't, you know, they worry so much about the instrument, they don't think about the words, what they're saying, what they're feeling. So, um, it worked so well when we dabbled around with it. Yeah, yeah. I started doing it with just piano when I was out there and then trio. And uh, then I really wanted to get it fully orchestrated to record. Because I had I had done it in my shows, but never recorded it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just before COVID, actually, I recorded the song. And it was in the, and it's in the can. And now we had COVID and all this stuff. Yeah. So, and I, it's been taking me a long time to come out of COVID. <laughs> Um, I understand that too. Yeah. Yes. So now I want it with, with the full arrangement, courtesy of me and my my wonderful rec record producer Stefan Oberhoff, brilliant genius. He did all my other previous or latest recordings. Um, we totally orchestrated it. I love it. Oh, I love with it. French horns, and we yeah. had Matt Cooker, who's with the Philharmonic, doing a guest cello. 
and everything. And um, and now I I got the had the ability to do the video. Yeah. And so this to me is what it's, it was my breakthrough as a producer. I, I would have to produce it. I was funding it. I was producing it. Yeah. It was a risk. I decided to take a you know, bigger risk. And I said, I need something like this to get myself back out in the arena. Yeah. Of performing. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I mean, it's, yeah. and I, and I, they, they are beautiful together. The songs are just, I mean, they're just, you're, you're phrasing everything. It's just really, how do you, how do you approach well-known songs? When you, when you do songs, how do you approach them any differently than originals or? No, you know, originals, um, depending on if they were totally written for me or I'm, I'm yeah. learning somebody else's original that I'm learning for the first time, it has right. to have an ingredient in it that I feel. If I can't relate to it, if it doesn't do anything to me inside, I can't sing it. I mean, years ago, they brought me raindrops keep coming, falling on my head. Yeah, that song, yeah. Excuse me? Cute <laughs> song, but... <laughs> Uh, that tells you how much I know about hits, right? <laughs> you said, "Excuse me, I love that." So but that's why you couldn't relate to that song, and really. Also, and there's another one too, because I said there was the way of love, which I couldn't relate to. Oh yeah, that's but at that time they got to a lyricist that changed it to, "Can I stop the rain?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which Edie Gourmet later recorded. My yeah. those words that were done for me. Oh, and sorry. don't forget, Cher has the hit with the original lyric. How yeah, yeah. Know? But I couldn't relate to that lyric. It was too trite to me. I need to get meat. I need to have meat. I guess I'm a, I'm a performance singer. I don't know. I love story songs. Yeah. I love emoting. It becomes so ingrained in my being. Yeah. I would yeah. call you a performer. I'd say, that's why I said I performer, singer. I just, I, I see you as a performer. Well, I mean, you've done so much stage. I mean, that stage yeah. is performance. It's... So that's you know that's how I pick that's how I pick songs and why I pick songs. Yeah. And now also I like songs that have messages of bringing people together. Yeah. In light, hearts open, compassion, yeah. generosity. Yeah. Like you know, that. integrity, love. Things you can never get too much of. Thank no, you. never. And everything begins and ends with love. I agree. The totally creation agree. of the earth came with love. The creation of Adam and Eve came with love. The creation of the rest of us came with love. And we're supposed to come together and take care of it all for future generations and make it a positive place. Yeah, I agree. I want to add, I want to go back a couple, a few years and ask you, because I was just curious, because I've never, I've never seen anybody ask you these things, but I'm very curious. You were on Ed Sullivan. You did like mm -hmm. three or four on there. How was he to you? Because he's such an enigma. I'm just, I'm always just curious, like how, being on his show, of course, was a big deal, obviously. But like, what was he like to you? Uh, well, we first met him in his hotel apartment, oh. um, Park Avenue, because he and Sylvia lived in an apartment in the, was it the name of the Drake Hotel or something? It was on Park Avenue or something. Okay. And that was the first time I met him. Um, one on one. And we were looking to, I had finished my first album. And, uh, this would be, my manager thought, a great place to oh, yeah, yes. go on tour. Um, and he was very sweet in his apartment. Okay. He was very sweet. And he presented me the first time very nice, very uh, genuinely. And we even had an arbitration because my agent got Hollywood Palace to want me and talk to them and promised them my debut. So here I was. 18 years old, and I'm in the middle of this arbitration over my debut. Wow. It was like, that's you know, amazing. But we wanted Ed Sullivan to win, I have to admit. Well, I mean, both places are good, but Palace was good too. <laughs> However, not realizing that if Hollywood Palace didn't get the debut, they didn't want me at all. Because oh, it's wrong with the second appearance. What's wrong? They only wanted the debut. See, there's politics everywhere. There, a girl. That that's the truth. Everywhere, and I learned it early in life. <laughs> yes, it's you're very right about that, Miss Ross. <laughs> completely. That's so great. But but Ed Sullivan, of course, was a bigger name. It was broadcast yeah. across the and country. Everybody was what everybody watched every Sunday night at eight o'clock. Yeah. It was yeah. Ed Sullivan's hour. Yeah, is that funny? And, and you know what's so funny is that I did the Ed Sullivan show February 9th, nineteen sixty nine, and the Beatles did it February 9th, nineteen sixty four. 
Oh, how weird. Okay, what weird coincidence. Yeah, I like that coincidence. I was a Beatle maniac. Of course. <laughs> Uh, but when, no, wait, wait. So, so when, so before you went on, you were eighteen years old. I, I can't even imagine being eighteen years old, about to go on the, one of the hottest shows in television. I mean, were you like super nervous the way you cough? Like, I'm sorry. I mean, what was it like backstage for you? I, I, I don't show it in my demeanor, but <laughs> inside, oh my God, you know, do I know what I'm doing? Do I know <laughs> All these people and Barbara Eden was on. And oh wow. Well. Sam and Dave were on and all these and I'm like saying oh my god and they couldn't backstage the makeup and the hair people couldn't have been great I mean they, they were fabulous but I you know still as a newcomer and it's live you cannot falter I mean and he had me on the week before announcing my appearance for the following week because um it got out in the newspaper who my sister was. It wasn't supposed to. He was supposed to like, uh, come on as a, just a newcomer, no attachments, no nothing. And then someone from my record label let it leak out. So then the New York Times came after and wanted an interview before the Ed Sullivan show. And I, I, I got stuck. And so he had now the license to introduce me as, but he did it the week before, had us in the audience and brought oh. me up. After, you know, after yeah. to introduce me to Carol Lawrence, who was there, and basically to Topol, who had just gotten the role for uh, uh, in Fiddler on the Roof yeah. as Tavia. And I, it's so funny because I did end up auditioning for Norman Jewison seven times. Oh, my God. I, to, I, I read each daughter. I read each daughter. And every day I'm wearing a schmata on my head and I'm doing the dances and everything because it's, you know, yes. it's, you know what? from where I come. Right. Right. And I really, really felt it. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get the role. But uh, you didn't get one daughter. You know killed, you know one killed, of them. What killed it for me? Because I listened to my manager, who said when I sang for Huddle, "Far from the Home I Love," I was I was singing it like a sixteen year old, even though I was eighteen, nineteen. He said, "No, no, you got to sing it like this." I said, "But that's not a, that's too immature." Right. It's too immature. Right. And he gave me service with this. And so I went into Norman Jewish and I sang it like that. And I lost the role because it was the wrong approach. So you were right in the first place. I, was, I, I read for Seidel, I read for, and I was really, the Chava I also related to because my father came from Tsarist Russia and he would have felt the same thing about me if I was going out with a Russian. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt all of these feelings. I had such a connection, you know? But the but lesson is you should listen to, listen to yourself. That's the lesson. Listen to yourself. Yeah. Listen to yourself. So trust yourself as a producer or whatever, you know, yeah. and, you know, and learn a lot too. Keep yourself open because there's so much to learn. And I am a newcomer at producing. Yeah. You know, yeah. but uh, That's a valuable experience, a wonderful and joyous experience. Well, you know, I get why they were saying, let's just introduce her on her own. No, no baggage, no attachment. Let the audience see her for herself, and then when it comes out eventually, oh, great, she's she's great. Like they would know you first. I I get exactly why they want to do that. I told you, I totally get it. You know, it would have been better for me. I think you know. Yeah. Now yeah. I had no time to live up to the comparisons. Right. You know, they don't compare you to my sister at the same age as me. She's now twenty five, and she so has has so much behind her in experience. Yeah. And they were like comparing us. Although there was one guy who wrote up the television appearance and he said, well, Barbara is devastating, like a high strung tornado. And Rosalind is inviting like a freshly ripened peach. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an endorsement. That's an endorsement. We like peaches. Okay. <laughs> that always remains with me. I don't <laughs> I don't blame you. That's a very, I say, that's why I asked you, you have some very interesting things come your direction. And that's a very interesting way of putting that. That's very colorful and very um, expressive. <laughs> okay. But, but you brought up something that's really interesting, right? They wouldn't, they, they, if they were going to do a comparison, it should have been, okay, when Barbara was 18, when right. she started, not that's now, so Barbara today. Like, that's, you're right. It's so weird that they wouldn't. Well, obviously, you were successful on that, obviously. And then I want to ask you about later, you were on Saturday Night Live. In 1977. 
Yeah. So when, when his brother in law Elliot Gould. Right. So how was that experience? That's a whole different experience. Like how was that? That, that was great. Also, I mean, I was I was hoping they would use me in a skit. I would have loved to do a skit, but they didn't. I was a musical artist guest. Yes. <laughs> so um, Elliot was great, um, very supportive, and um, and he introduced me, which I loved because I'm a family person. Yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, my son Jason's aunt Rosy. <laughs> oh, funny! That's so funny. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh my god! No, it was. It was. It was also so great. I just missed. Wanting to be in the in a, in a skit. A skit, I know a skit. Put her in a skit now. Get her, bring her back. And bring her in a skit. Um, I, I, well, you say things out loud here. You never know. Never know. You never know, Ross. You never know, right? You never know. Um, but that's what I mean. we're talking, folks. We're talking for you younger viewers. We're talking. This is early years of SNL. Not what we have today. Right. So, different, whole, how many different casts have they had? I know. So many, so many stand-ups came out of Saturday yeah. Night Live. Yeah. Successful, all of them. I, I feel like Saturday Night Live is a great representation of kind of New York. It's kind of it's like it's just like a microcosm of New York. And, right. You know, that nighttime of New York. I, I just love New York so much. So, I mean, because now were you born in Brooklyn too? Flatbush. Yay. My fa okay, so you understand this. So, my family is from Fort Hamilton Parkway. Uh huh. I used exactly. to know somebody that came from Fort, it was in my class after living because her father was in the service. Yeah. It was, it was there like a, a, a base there in Fort Hamilton? Yeah, near there. Yeah, because my, my grandfather yeah. was, in the, was in the service. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so they were there, but now they changed it. So it's kind of Park Slope. It's kind of Prospect Park, but now they changed it to Kingsington. Yes, I heard that when I, I was, was like, referring to it the last time I, I did a um, concert at Brooklyn College. Oh, yeah, Brooklyn College, yeah. I did a concert there in 2012. Yeah. And that's when I was told. And, um, and I did an interview with Channel One. Oh, yeah, Channel One. And they, yes. That's when I heard that it was changed to Kensington. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm like, okay. Yeah. I grew up, you know, taking the F train from, man, get out, going out there, mm -hmm. walking over. And they said, now I saw the sign. Well, that's why I was there. I saw the sign. I said, Kensington. I'm like, oh, okay, new name. You were the F train. I, I go back earlier. IRT. Except before, that's before me. I think it's before me, I think, I think, or I was really young. IRT, BMT, IND. We were the IRT line. The last, the, the second before the last station, which ended up at Brooklyn College, the junction, we called it the junction. I love it. See, Brooklyn, I, you know, always Brooklynites, we have to stick together. We have to stick together. Oh, yeah. We have to stick together. Yes, I love it. Anybody, tell anybody from Brooklyn, they're like, yes. <laughs> it's the biggest borough, folks. At all oh, Brooklyn. yeah. It's the best. And there were parts of Brooklyn I didn't even, I've never even seen. Same here. No, same here. I mean, I used to, you know, my area, I knew. Yeah, I had family. I had family. Um, oh, see, you you understand, you understand this. I had a grandmother who lived in Crown Heights, uh -huh. and it was very Hasidic Jew over there where she was at. And I used to go over there and and the best delis, everything you think of over there, of course. I thought the best delis were my neighborhood. Well, you're there. Flappers is good you. Flappers is good too. We had the Foster Delicatessen, and yes. then we had Paul and Jack's appetizing store where you would get the cream cheese off the block, and they had oh. the white fish. And the and the lot hungry oh. and the pickles in the barrel and next door was Shenley's Kosher Bakery where oh. you used to get the, the big uh, black and white cookies and oh the, black and white cookies black and uh, the most incredible brownies and the Charlotte Russes oh yes and yes I know that stuff. and they made the best fresh every day the the rye bread the corn oh. rye, the the rolls the bagel oh. Oh, and then you'd go next door to get the rest of the stuff to put on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I I try to explain to people. They're just you know in New York, there's some things you can only get there that are better than everywhere else. I'm sorry, I just think there is. I also, I think the best Chinese food is in New York. Also, I'm sorry. Yeah. It Although it changed along the line. I mean, yeah. our neighborhood had a great Chinese choice, which where my sister worked as a cashier when she first babysat. Oh wow. Their, sure. their daughters. I'm friends. I was friends with them because they were yeah. more my age. And as a matter of fact, I'm still in contact with Debbie, who now lives in uh, Hawaii. Wow. But um, my sister worked there. So sometimes I would go with her to the Chinese restaurant. And when she took, uh, they were paying the check, I would give the little kids lollipops. Oh. And then when she was finished for the night, we'd go on the other side where there weren't people and have a nice feast. Oh. But they were our neighbors. They lived right upstairs. So it was like, uh, 
we had oh great Chinese food. Oh, great Chinese and, food. And in those days, a combination plate was a dollar seventy-five. Oh, I, yeah. I'm start. I'm start. You know, Ross, I'm starting to get to that age too now, where I'm like, I remember when it was like, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting there too, girl. I'm getting there. But James, did you ever have pizza? A whole pizza that was a dollar and a quarter? No, but I have. I've had pizza. A whole pizza that was around five dollars. Oh, so see, you're much later. Because and when and when you get a slice, it was fifteen cents a slice. Such a Frankfurters off the grill with the hot oh. sauerkraut and oh. the mushroom. Fifteen cents. A no. bowl of soup was thirty-five. A roast beef or corned beef sandwich was seventy-five cents on club bread, which is like a soft Italian bread. Oh, I know. It's, it's yes, yes. It was only ten cents more. I, I miss those days. I miss those days too. <laughs> when we started, girl, I, I miss those days too. I, do. I, I just, I just, I, I, I didn't mention Brooklyn. We love our Brooklyn. I didn't mention it. Um, I just, it's a great place to grow up. Yes, yes, I agree. I totally agree. And um, yeah. and a lot of folks really do when they come from Brooklyn. They really feel for their hometown. Wherever, you, wherever you live, take it. You take it with you. Don't you? No, you don't. I still haven't gotten rid of my accent. I don't. Try I do it. have it. <laughs> it's there. I love it. And when I, I come back to New York, it gets heavier. Oh, yes. I'm going to say, wait, she's like, I think I've been out in California longer than I've been in New York, but her, when she comes back, it is thick, thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. I do. I love it. It just, they just, it's something about it makes it, makes it warm. Um, so for, you know, you know, for you, you have carved out this career. You were on Broadway too. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, when you're a New York performer, Broadway is the ultimate. It just is. So when you got the show, how do you remember how you felt that you're like, I'm actually doing something on Broadway. Like I'm actually doing something on Broadway. And it was a review called Three from Brooklyn. I know, Three from Brooklyn. That's why I said Everybody that. Like, how it. ironic Three is from that? Brooklyn. <laughs> yes. And I, I sang, you know, I had like some numbers in the, that I did. We all did our own little shtick. We had a cab driver character and then the three kids, uh, the young boys that did this dance number. Uh, you had stand-up comics that were from the Borscht Belt, um, and me. <laughs> and you. <laughs> I love it. At the Helen Hayes Theater. Helen Hayes, I've been there. I've been, um, there. I've been there. I love I love Broadway. I love that. And also, I, we have to mention, because you were on a show, iconic cult classic show, The Nanny. And you yeah. know, and I just yeah. I just saw recently Fran Dresser's interview with your sister. Uh -huh. uh, she had a chance to like gush show because the show, you know, yeah. everybody great, loved it. Was the a party. Great interview, wasn't it? It was a it's great, a great interview. interview. It was a great interview. Yeah. Um, between two, to me, two legends. I mean, two legends. And for me, it's yeah, we had Queens versus Brooklyn. We had you know, <laughs> great actress, great actress. I mean, all that we just all that I just love all this stuff. The president said we had it, it was great. Um but you were actually on the nanny. So how much fun was I, mean, I just feel like that show must have been hilarious to work on because it was so funny was, on screen. Everybody was so lovely. Everybody was lovely. We love Fran, love Peter yes. and the director, because they, they had different directors, but it was just, it was fun, you know, and uh, Renee Taylor wasn't on the episode that I was on, but I had her dressing room. I love Renee too. Yeah, she's, <laughs> like, she's great. She's great. Um, but it was it was it was a blast, and then I, we did the song. We performed the song that I was one of the writers of. Yes. It's the only song I've written, actually. Everybody calls me a songwriter. I don't call myself. Well, you a are song a songwriter. You wrote one That's song. What everybody says, but I only wrote once the lyrics of one song <laughs> with two other people. So I was. Like, <laughs> that's a, um, but that's the song we did on the air, and. Uh -huh. uh, it was great. Fran was great. I loved her reaction. Like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like it's just like <laughs> kissing my shoes. You know? <laughs> yes. You had a great sense of you had a great sense of humor about it. I just thought that show seems like so much fun. I mean, yeah, just... It was. It was. It was it was a, a delight. Um, you also do uh you've done charity work. I want I want to highlight that a little bit too, because you've done some charity work. Some of your organizations, like for example, for Broadway Cares Equity AIDS, Fights AIDS, the APLA. Um, you do things with Alzheimer's, doing things with animal welfare. Um, you know, what are some what are some of the causes that you're kind of you know you're working on right now? Well, days? you know, right now I'm I'm not involved. But what I I'm a member of the She Angels now. Yes. And that's Women for Women. Yes. And my director Monique brought me to a meeting, and I had to join. 
Um, because if we women don't stick together, okay, <laughs> like, okay. right, right, right. Um, and what we do is they 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 a check every month goes to a different five hundred one that is benefiting women in, or girls in some way. Good. We get awarded a check, and it gives us also a reason to get together for a clutch, a happy hour, or whatever. You know, but and it's expanding. It's we started in the LA area. I think now they're in Orange County. There's a, a New York chapter. They're hoping to bring this around the world eventually. So it's women for women, and um, and we must we have to support each other. We yeah, have to yeah. Stand by each other. So that's women, great. Because women can work with women, right? Of course. Yes. And other, other than that, I was like, when I had to put my puppy down, I got very involved and I gave, I gave to so many animal yeah. um, because if I couldn't have my puppy, I, was all, I had to help others. Yes. Uh, so with that, and of course, AIDS. Um, uh, Been a long time supporter. And, and Alzheimer's and stuff because my mom had Alzheimer's. So I, and I, I took care of her. I took care. I, I oversaw her care. Oh, you did. Okay. Let so, me ask you a question because it's it's such a unique disease. Um, we went through it several times too here. Yeah. What is what was one of the things you learned from caring for your mom with Alzheimer's? I learned to be very sensitive toward the elderly. Number one. Um, I sometimes go out in my audience and I hug. I hug. Um. That whole experience with my mom made me realize how vulnerable uh, they become, especially with Alzheimer's. Uh, my mom some days would recognize me and then other days not. Other days she'd say, who's that pretty girl in the other room to her other care to her caretaker? And she would say, you know who that is, mom, you know who that is, that's mom. She, she would say, Rosie, yeah. It's, so she would come too, you know, and then she would want to sometimes try to talk to me and sit down on the sofa, but she could never get a sentence out. But I knew she was just wanted to know if I was okay. If I was okay. It was the hardest thing. I was hoping, you know, that then, then there was the day that she fell out of bed when I was I was out and one caretaker was getting clothes together for the next day for I think it was for Thanksgiving. Um and I was with my mom 24 seven, pretty much in the hospital, even though I had the, our 24 hour caretakers, I wouldn't leave her side because she couldn't communicate. Oh. And I had to oversee everything because believe me, they can make mistakes. Yes. They can make mistakes. So I was there and before I came in the morning, I called. And when I left at night, before I went to bed, I called. And I oversaw, I oversaw everything. And I, it, and I really wished my mom had, had lasted a lot longer, because I think that as long as she could enjoy singing a tune, not knowing the words, and enjoy her milkshakes, which as a young person, she never liked. She was all about health food, and now she couldn't remember that. <laughs> that is hilarious, wow. <laughs> she, okay. she, she was afraid of flying, and yet during this time, we were able to get her on a plane to go visit New York, and her friends in Florida, and my fam family in Florida. So she had more she was on a plane, it worked. But when she, <laughs> but yeah, it was so, oh, yeah. it couldn't, you know, I, I, and the, when I got the call that we were losing her because uh, oh, of the mistakes that happened. And now um, I was, I was getting my taxes done and I got the call and I had to leave and run to the hospital and, uh, and she passed before I got there, and I felt so bad because I promised her I, I I would never she'd never be alone. She was always with her caretaker, but that particular week, her normal to, caretaker was vacationing back in the Philippines, so it was a new person. Oh. And and I I rushed back. I called my sister. I called everybody, and I just you know I came and um, and I I was I was hopeful because I saw the chest going up and down, but it was the breathing machine, and I just fell apart. You know, you, you, everybody has their problems with their parents. You have, you know, you have your disagreements, your arguments. Yeah. You go through a couple of times where you hate your parents. Yes. You love your parents. Get away from me, ma. <laughs> yes. yes. Every, if anybody tells you everything's perfect, and I, God bless those who have a perfect one. I don't know. I don't know anybody. I don't know many that do. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. But no matter what, you know, 
family is family, blood is blood. And um, I stand by mine in every way. Yeah. Every way, if I'm needed, I'm there. I don't you know where to be. You know, Rosalind, what I learned, the longer I've been an adult, I was able to see my parents as adults. Yeah. And that does help. It, it, it does help go, okay, well, now I see them not just as my mommy and or dad, right. you know, whoever you're close to. But like, they're adults too. And nobody's perfect. Nobody's, nobody's perfect. perfect. Only God is perfect. Or yes. the universe or whatever. All of us are in an, a learning journey. We're here to learn and we step backwards. We go back. As good as I am, I could step backwards one day and have a, uh, you know, hey, yeah. my anxiety and my whatever. Somebody said to me, are you always this calm? I said, no. <laughs> I, I go through anxious moments and stuff and I become a, like we call a halalia. It's like where my friends, I get nuts about the, working the internet and I can't do it. And I get frustrated. <laughs> yes, I understand that one. Or by chance you said something to somebody in the wrong way and it was mistaken. And you have to, I always look to myself first. What did I do to cause this? I never blame. I look to myself first. Yeah, very smart. And you try to rectify it. And if you can't rectify it, well, you know, yeah. and then there are those who who aren't uh, light enough or from the heart enough that you even want them around anymore. Very true. You know, yeah. you learn a lot about life just living it. I agree with I agree with that all. I always say the the more the older I get, the less I know. I say yeah. all the time. I'm learning and stuff. The bottom, and the bottom line is, as we get older, you understand the difficulties your parents had being yes. parents. Oh yeah. It's not easy. Was, and you realize, you know, they did the best they could for what they were taught and where they came from in their childhood. Yes. Yes. You know, it's like you and I, we represent what we were brought up. I tell, take, uh, show me a child from one to six, I'll show you a man. Yeah, they always say that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so what we, what we learn from our families in the beginning sets a basis. So if they're fearful, you get the fear. You know, it's like, it's all of that. And my mother was never a braggart. She never, she always said, you know, count, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And I used to say when she would sit there with other, other women bragging about their children, she would never, she'd stay mom. I said, Ma, why don't we, they're all bragging about, why, why don't you talk about, she said, let them come to me. I don't have to brag about my children. Okay. I like that. She was very humble and very, you know, in that way, but she was also a powerhouse. But, you know, she, when she felt her oats, because she went to college at a late age and became a school secretary, and she was well looked up to by the principal she worked with and everything. And, so, you know, it's like she had pride in herself, you know, but she never took anything for granted. She never looked for, you know, to be given, you know, and, uh, and you understand that when you become an adult, what you might not have understood as a child. Yes, which is which is makes sense. You're looking to them as a parent first. That's all you care about, security, whatever. Now you're an adult. You live out in the world. You see, you see how things go down. And and I can look back and go, wow, my parents went through that generation. Like all mm -hmm. that, all that entails, whatever that was. Um, so I get some leeway now. I'm like you. I gave a lot of forget. I forget. I forgave my parents years ago. I, I just I had to forgive them for whatever. You know, I get for whatever. Yeah, but then you have that even with people in your life, and you yeah. try. You know, you try to understand the other side or whatever. Because um, once again, none of us are perfect. Nope, not at all. But, you know, it's and you have to come to grips with that. I don't. You know, no man is an island. I will give everybody who worked on my project every credit because I couldn't have done it without them. Right. I right. couldn't have done it. I, I couldn't have done this alone. No. No. And the fact that I was able to have such loving support within the project and then from uh, the fans that were hearing about it and right. I mean, it's just so heartwarming. Yeah. And it makes you want to give more, even more than you yes. than you want to give. You know what I mean? Yes, it you does. Well, I do. I know. Well, you know, positivity and happiness and light yeah. and compassion multiply. Right. Uh, before we go, I, I just I could talk to you forever. Um, just have to ask, did you read your sister's book? <laughs> that huge giant. I, I, I actually did I do aud audible because uh, I my eyes, even though I I can't even see with my readers anymore. <laughs> do all those I pages, I I I, too. I'd rather have to listen to the forty eight hours. Yeah, forty. I'll say forty something hours. And I really love hearing her her read it. 
<laughs> yes, I heard it. Like, it's exactly how she talks. Yes, it is. I know. It's like, yeah, it's about that. I think it's 45 hours or whatever. 48. Oh, 48. Oh, my goodness. And I'm not finished yet because of my project. I had to take my time because I couldn't lose focus in my thing to oh, get right. into everything. Yes, right. You know, yeah. so I'm still listening. But um, I, I like listening to her telling it. Yes. I love it. I do. I love it. Uh, everyone, it, it's you, you have to check out the video, The Look of Love, The Island. You can go on YouTube, and it's, and I'll put the link in the description. You go to well, Hassanita to Roslin's um, YouTube channel. It's really beautiful. Um, the song is beautiful. Your phrasing of the song is beautiful. It's, you are beautiful in the video. Um, and it has a beautiful message. And it's, I said, there's diversity in it that's just normal. It's just there. And I, and I love that. And so you want to check that out. It is out now. Thank you, Miss Ross, for being on my show. Thank you, Mr. James. <laughs> it's, about, it's just wonderful to you. And this is Extra Connections. I am James Law Jr. You can go to YouTube, UJLJ Media. Extra Connections is on Facebook, and we're on every audio streaming service platform you can think of. Thanks for watching and or listening, and we'll see you next time.